Hi, welcome to another episode of Beyond Chronic Disease. My name is Wendy Gathercole and I'm the host of the show. And I have the beautiful Ivanka Nightingale with me today. Hi, Ivanka. How are you? Hi, Wendy. How are you going? Nice I'm to see wonderful. you. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Ivanka, is her business is Heart Tones and she does beautiful kahuna massage. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to speak about the kahuna massage today. So I'll just introduce what kahuna massage is. Um, it's an ancient, and I'm reading this, just disclaimer, I am reading it, <laughs> is an ancient therapeutic massage technique based on the teachings and practices of the Hawaiian kahunas. In the language of native Hawaiians, the word kahuna is derived from huna, which means secret knowledge. In other words, a kahuna was a master practitioner of the huna arts. The massage, lomi lomi, was traditionally practiced in the Hawaiian Islands as one of the kahuna healing arts and for relaxation. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. So yes. Kahuna massage in the West is also said to be therapeutic and extremely relaxing. Yes. So Ivanka is an expert in kahuna massage. <laughs> so I'm going to speak to Ivanka and her experiences and mm. um, her receiving and giftings of kahuna and mm. how it has changed her life and the client's lives mm. as well. Over to you, Ivanka. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Yes, uh, I was just saying I haven't really talked about Kahuna publicly before as much as I love it personally, both gifting and receiving. It is very much an exchange. Um, sometimes we call it the soul dance. Now, with uh, Kahuna, it is a very holistic body work in that it definitely works on the body and can relax tense muscles, shoulder tension, lower back pain, all of those traditional ailments that we all suffer from. But it also works on the deeper level of emotion, mental, um, and even the spiritual level. So I often tell my clients that it, the space that is created is in unconditional love. Another way to look at that is that it is very much a space of non-judgment and a space of full allowance of what the person brings with them on the day. Some people that come, they come because they have shoulder tension and that's all they're interested in. It's just relaxing their shoulders, having more ease in their body. Other people that, for example, are undergoing uh, like psychological uh, treatment, seeing a psychologist, and I have used Kahuna for this myself, is I find that the bodywork actually supports the emotional and mental changes that are going on. As we were discussing before, science has shown that when under stress or duress, the cells in our body mm. can actually change shape from spherical to ellipt elliptical. So mm. when we kind of look at kahuna that way, um, supporting your body and working through your body when you're exp experiencing emotional stress is actually going to help shift and change that and release it. So unlike a massage you might have at a shopping center in a parlor, you know, where somebody just massages your back. When we do a kahuna session, we very much encourage people to be present with what they're experiencing. So very often for me, when I first started kahuna, I was experiencing a lot of grief. And so I might have spent a lot of the session just crying and being really present with my sadness. And it's not to indulge the sadness so to mm. speak and you know get trapped in it it is to feel it so that it can move and shift through the body some of my clients will have an outburst of anger or swearing on the table because mm. that is what is being stuck in in the body because we are very good and our bodies are very good at internalizing for us and locking into themselves the emotions mm. that we are experiencing if we do not allow ourselves to feel them and so each session is very different it depends on how vulnerable the client is prepared to be, how much they want to get in touch with, how much they want to shift. Mm -hmm. And there is no rightness and wrongness of what that is for, you know, whoever comes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it is. it does acknowledge that mind-body connection or the emotion-body connection and that working on both at the same time some, uh, speeds up the process mm. of transformation. And I just, um, kahuna massage is also said to stimulate the lymphatic um, system. It does, yes. And I had a, sorry, um, I had a, a podcast recently with Chelsea Jean, the lymphatic yes. queen. Yes. And so the lymphatic system is really, really important to get moving because yeah. we 
we don't have a system in our body to pump it like we do the blood. So exactly. if you need your lymphatic system pumped, yes. um, Kahuna Massage is perfect and Ivanka's the lady to do that, people. <laughs> they help with that. And, you know, one of the reasons, like, the Kahuna is good is um, that it does also bring you in contact with your breath. You know, like we are so trained to hold our breath yes. and we can also breathe very shallowly, very often, sort of only down to the diaphragm, not beyond. So yeah. during yeah. the massage, if you are present with your breath together with, because, you know, we squeeze your body in the nicest possible way yes. to make it feel <laughs> yeah. good. Um, I guess another thing to be said for Kahuna is that we do work the whole body. So let's say if you come for an hour and a half session, we would work the backs of your legs, the um, glutes, muscles the back the arms then we flip you over we work the front of your legs the belly mm -hmm. and that's i suppose where the lymphatic clearing really comes in at the end because we do work through the belly where there are all of those lymph nodes around, around the breast drawing it out mm -hmm. through the arms and so it is a very holistic massage to receive in that your body will be relaxed it also might release toxins so it's important mm -hmm. to drink water after it's wonderful to reconnect you or reconnect the person to their body. So when f people feel quite ungrounded, it is mm -hmm. a wonderful massage just to bring you back and help you ground in your body. And there's not a one formula that we use for everybody. You know, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer light touch. Some people like heavier touch. If you don't, people don't like their face touch, their feet touch take away and accommodate so that the person feels most comfortable so they can open and receive. Um, one thing that people might find surprising about Kahuna, and I always bring this up in my initial conversation, is that we actually ask the person to strip naked, not in front of us. Mm. There is privacy for that. And then we drape the sarong for modesty and protection. Mm. But mm. being fully undressed really allows for the flow of the practitioner over the body mm. we use our forearms a lot and so we might start at the top of the head left and right side of the body go as if you can visualize it from the shoulders all the way down to the knees on one side then on the other side and so this flow that creates that we create with the movement then hopefully also helps unlock the flows of energy mm. in your body and help remove any stuckness we can use quite heavy pressure or very localized pressure if there are particular stuck points because those might be the points where people might be holding their emotion mm. and or whatever's mm. holding them back and so that's again mm. is where we might ask people to vocalize their pain because we are so trained to keep our pain in yeah you know and the more we constrict with it the more we embed it mm. so being able to feel the pain vocalize the pain yeah and I um when you talk about that Ivanka I was over in Bali and I had a massage now I'm, I'm not sure it was part of the retreat that I was at so it was really um it was really localized and pressurized and um at yes. certain at, in certain points and when when I I had three of these uh, massages in in mm. the time that I was at the retreat, and the very first one I had, the pain in a certain part of my body when she was pressing on it was just unbearable, and I was just, ow, yes. oh, that's hurting. And and she was um, beautiful in the way that she spoke of the spoke of the, yes. the problem there, and it was just so resonated with me. And but after the third session and through, um, you know the the food and the other mm. modalities that we were doing for the retreat, she the, the third session there was no pain whatsoever, and I thought that mm. she might have changed the pressure that she was using mm. or whatever. But no, she just said it's all been cleared. Yes, you know, for the time that I was there. Amazing. So, yeah. So mm. I just find I just find it amazing how your body can can release the pain and like you said yes. when, you, when you do hold hold things in and that's where yes. disease can really take hold isn't definitely. it definitely because our bodies you know they are very good to us they hold anything for us that we feel that we need to hold on to mm. you know? yes so, and and very often like people rely on the table and only once they touch they go oh my gosh like, i'm really 
tight there because we are so disconnected yeah. in our daily life. Again, our bodies just go, okay, well, the pain is there. I need to keep going. So I'm just going to mask over it. And it's not even often in our awareness. Mm. And, you know, one thing I would like to acknowledge is that our bodies are master healers. Mm. If we create space for our bodies in which they can relax, then our body actually knows exactly what it needs to do to heal mm. what needs healing. But we don't, we're always, not always, but often very busy and we just don't have that relaxed space. So, because some people might go, oh my gosh, like an hour and a half, it's a very long session. But there is a marked difference I find if I do the one hour session mm. and the 90 minute session, because a lot more space opens up, even though it's just that extra 30 minutes mm. for the body to relax more deeply. And so in that space of relaxation, it can go, okay, well, now I can actually really look at what's going on, you know, in my and liver, I, always, I can direct some energy there. Yeah. yeah. And I always think what's, what's an, what's an hour and a half when it's your health, you know, it's, it's so important. Yes. Your health is the most um, important thing in this world, I believe. Yes. And if you don't have your health, you can't, you know, you don't have life. Mm. Now, I really loved how you spoke of um, kahuna with the breath as mm. well, because I, I had a, um, I, I did a podcast um, on with Pilates mm. and how Pilates helps with your body. Yes. And my, um, Danita started speaking of the breath at the end. So we're, mm. we're, we're doing another podcast. Breathing, I find, is very important for your body. The way you breathe yes. is very important um, for for your body to function. So I, um it's it's just amazing that you brought breath up again um, mm. here because I was thinking of that after I did the podcast with her mm. the breathing because it was so important for the way I breathe and the mm. way I feel in my body when I do different breathing techniques. Yes. And then I had another I had another podcast and breathing came up again. I thought, right, mm. this needs to be done. And now mm. you've said it again. So breathing is so mm. so important for us. What it is. You, what what yes. part of that do you take um, away with, you know, the breath? Yeah, so um, like in, in um, Kahuna, you can practice the ha breath, which is an energy building breath. And just in breathing in and breathing out with a ha sound, you can feel the resonance that has in your chest and right. in your body. Yeah. And even, you know, like people are scared to breathe out loud. Mm. A lot of a lot of us as kids were told, you know, got to be seen, not heard. Mm. Um, I know when I was growing up, and I love my mum deeply, but oh my gosh, sometimes I'd be scared to breathe around her, yeah, because she was so sensitive mm. to the breathing, you know. And I even noticed that with some of my kids when they have a cold and they, you know, breathing <laughs> like they just go, can you just breathe more quietly? Yeah. So it's something that we're not even aware of mm. with our breath. Again, I guess what happens with Pilates breathing, any kind of breathing exercises. It just connects us more to the body. One thing I would like to say about breath, I suppose, is that in Kahuna, we also acknowledge the elemental connection of our body, you know. So the bones in our body would be connected to the earth because our body is created from the same elements as mm -hmm. everything around us, which means we really are one with the earth in our chemical composition. And this mm -hmm. body is gifted to us through the elements of the planet. And so you've got the earth in the bones and the water in the blood and the sweat and the tears and the breath, you know, that is the air element. Mm. Um, the fire is our spirit, it's our passion. And so we incorporate this elemental connection into the session. And so breathing very naturally tunes you into the air element all around, mm. which really feeds everything around us, keeps everything growing. And so it is a reminder, one thing with breath is that you can never breathe in the past and you can never breathe in the future. Mm -hmm. You're always breathing now. Yes. And so it is a very easy grounding, connecting tool when we've spoke of overwhelm before. Um, when we are overwhelmed, connecting with the breath, feeling it in the body. Uh, I'm sure Eckhart Tolle talks about in the power of now, you know, mm -hmm. how do you make yourself present? Because if you can be present, you can make choices from now. You can't, don't make choices from the past. You don't make choices impacted by the future. And so it is a very easy, and it doesn't also have to be like, 
you know, like intense mm. breath. Mm. It's like that. And then it's like that little breeze, you know, when you're outside and it's just a gentle breeze on your skin. Breathe like that. So you can actually mm. gift your body gentleness through the breath. So it opens up the exploration of who we are, what is our body, what consciousness does it have, how can we connect with our body and with, with ourselves in a truer way and then make choices from that place of what's authentic for us. And I, I, and and I said I something think... twice, it's just been skirting and so it's just escaped me. Twice now, I don't know the point I was going to make. Hopefully, it'll come the third time. <laughs> and look, I always lose my. I I go to ask uh, a question, and um, I oh, have you got it? Did yeah, I've got it. it. <laughs> One thing, yeah, yeah, this is. I think this is very helpful for people who try to meditate. Like I don't. I openly admit it. I don't consciously meditate sitting in our lotus pose. Yeah. So no. Kahuna is the lazy person's meditation, and I do love that about it. You know, it is, it's a lazy person's meditation. Another way I look at it is, again, this is reading uh, Gary Douglas's books through Access Consciousness, which is addressed in some of your other podcasts. Mm. Bodies love movement. Mm. One way the body can move is through receiving a massage. So next time you're thinking, I don't think I can go for that 5K run. Sure. Go, go for Go for her, 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 her massage. Go for instead. Her, 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 instead of her yeah. <laughs> and I think I was just gonna say yeah. to you, I think we um we take it for granted our breath, don't we? Because we're always breathing yes. out. Yes, we are. You know, and we don't until we until we actually stop. Mm. And I guess, um, you know, if we're in a, a state of stress or overwhelm or, you know, we always mm -hmm. we always use our breath. Our breath is one of those things that sort of brings us back and, and mm. brings us back and grounds. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I do, I do love, like, even with my dog who's lying next to me now is, you know, once I sit down and he lies down, there will come a point where he'll have a very deep sigh. Mm. And, I, and I know then. He can actually finally relax. You know, he's finally relaxed. Yeah. So, yes. Um, I just want to also mention, we talked about this a little bit, Wendy, before we started, just to let people know. So Kahuna, we have five uh, principles of Kahuna philosophy, uh, just to bring it forward. Um, one, the first one is Ike, uh, which it means the world is what you think it is, you know, which is the, the point of view you have is creating your reality. And so be very mindful of what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Carla, there are no limits. We are all one. Because we so often in the present reality live through separation. You know, we perceive ourselves as separate from everybody else mm -hmm. and everything else. And so it's a reminder that, in fact, we are all one. Mm -hmm. um, Makia, energy flows where attention goes. Uh, I am focused. So it is what am I creating? What do I? What am I focusing on? Where do I need to place my energy to achieve that? Manava, now is the moment of power, uh, which is very much about that present moment. Aloha, to love is to be happy. Mana, all power comes from within. So I'm confident I am the source of my life. And Pono, effectiveness is the measure of truth, which basically is about what is true for me and then living and acting from that. Because what's true for me is different from what's true for you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I love that too, that the Kahuna principles, they really resonate um, with me along with and sort of they were in line with access consciousness to a degree. Yes, very much so. Yeah, which is another modality. And if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you know that I'm an access consciousness fan. <laughs> so, as am I. <laughs> yes, it's Ivanka. I was having a little chuckle there before because my light. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, Ivanka, and I'm just noticing yes. my my lights going in and out, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And I think the clouds have come over, and you know, I have no idea. But anyway, when you're talking about all the mm. the principles of Kahuna, my my light was going all over mm. the place. Uh, anything mm. else you'd like to share with the Kahuna massage? Yes, just something just pinged for me. That is yeah, uh, yeah. what I love about Kahuna is um, sound healing. 
So when we, when sound, as we know, you know, has a certain vibration. Mm -hmm. And also, as we know, our mind loves to get involved in everything that we do. So when we do sound healing on the body, it totally bypasses the mind. So for example, if you have tension in your back, we might, mm -hmm. you know, one thing with kahuna is it's very much a yin yang balance of a massage. That's what we aim for. So we've got the flow, which is very feminine. Then we can have deeper tissue, which is more masculine, but we aim for the balance in the body. Sometimes after doing deep tissue massage, doing vibrational healing or sound healing actually can help accelerate that process. And I tend to do sound healing in most of my sessions mm. now that it really slips into the other bodies and it bypasses that mental body. So you might use the vowels. R -A -E -O -U. So, for example, you just hold a frequency. I'll do an example. For example, you'd go. And you would do that very close on the skin to where the soul point is. And so you can actually feel the vibration um, in that part of the body. Mm -hmm. And again, aligning it a little bit with access. Um, Dane here in his book, The Body Whisperer, talks about introducing chaos that helps with change and shifting limitations. Mm. So when you can think of a vibration, how it moves, it definitely introduces something different into the structure and into the area of the body. That's just what I came up with right now. I just mm. love doing it because I love the sound of it and it feels very light for me to do and I feel the body really enjoys it. So and you know, I feel that's very cool. Yeah, and the and the sound vibration um when it, like you say bypasses the mind and goes to your body. So mm. for um people that may not be at this point in mm. their health journey, yes. the holistic mind body approach, um, I explain it like as if you go to like a heavy rock concert, yes. where do you typically feel the music? Like you're not mm. thinking about it, you might be head banging or so forth, mm. but you can feel that beat in your heart space general generally around that area yes. you, you can actually feel it vibrate in your body and that's yes. and that's how the energy of the healings work mm. um on our body well that's is is that um is that yeah. a good explanation that's how i uh, always i love it i love it i just i sort of feel like i can explain it you know uh, to everyday pe people that aren't like i said that aren't on their the journey you know along on their journey there are these massages now you can get which are like vibrational massages um and people apparently just use them on themselves mm -hmm. i haven't actually seen one but um when you think of the vibrational healing you know that is a mechanical vibration that's generated mm -hmm. but the sound generates frequency which is a vibrational frequency which mm -hmm. does the same thing so some people for example i will do sounding all along the spine you know, yeah. on that very, um, and then interestingly, you talk to other people and one exercise physiologist explained to me what that actually does for that muscle and vibrating that particular muscle yeah. helps tension in it. So it's interesting how once you start looking into alternative, what my people might call alternative modalities, yeah. there are actually explanations and equivalents and people that have degrees that can explain it as why that works. Whereas mm. we might come to a intuitive point of view, but that doesn't make it wrong or less than mm. because practice listening to other people's bodies mm. and we read into the body. And I suppose both ways with access and with kahuna, that's what I do. That's what I aim for listening to the body, asking what the body requires and that's why each session is very different. Mm. You know, some people really require attention to their back. Other people require attention to their tummy. And so it's just going with what the body asks for and acknowledging that the body has consciousness. It knows what it needs. Mm. It knows how it can return to balance. And really, if we get out of the way and just allow space for the body to do that, it's going to do that. Yeah. And that is fair. Yeah. And, and that's just us getting out of the way. Sometimes it's hard to, for us to get out of the way, isn't it? <laughs> so hard. And I'm such a person 
I'm very aware this year how much I have been a mind person in my life, you know, and just through my mind. Mm. To you know, to believe in science, and I do believe in science. <laughs> and I've been trained in that scientific scientific method and looking for explanations, having answers, and my mind very much is practiced at that. But a lot of the energy healings um have been scientifically proven too. <laughs> How, how they work I, do, I I have said over a few um shows that I read a book called why woo woo works <laughs> and it's, um and oh my gosh I've forgotten his name now but I just um when I wrote wrote my book uh, whole foods the facts which I would hold it up if I had it in front of me but I've had to move office and I haven't had it I haven't got it here at the moment um, I had feedback from that and somebody, because I, I have a my journey um, started off with food and then it went into meditation and, and journey work and more mind, um, more body body work. Mm. And um, and they said, oh, yeah, I can understand the, the food sort of side of it because that's what I do. Um, mm. I sort of do that a little bit. But oh, if, if all that woo-woo works for you, well, that's great. <laughs> And then I came across this book, Why Woo Woo Works, and I thought, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And there, I remember there's, um, there is a huge section on Reiki healing, which is really an energetic healing. Yes. So not to take it away from this um, show, though, we're talking Kahuna <laughs> Massage with Ivanka Nightingale yes. yes. from yes. Heart Tones. So Interesting. Any- so, like both Reiki and Kahuna, you know, are based in that unconditional love energy. Yeah, yeah. so... And in the end, I feel that um, people find what really resonates with them. Yes. When a couple of, like about eight years ago, when I was starting the journey, I received Kahuna monthly and I couldn't have actually imagined not having it. Mm. Like my absolutely craving and needing it. Um, but because one thing, you know, that I found out at the time and that I was told at the time, and I do tend to align with that point of view a little bit, is that we are very undertouched as human beings. You know, most people mm. receive touch only in during sex. So if people are single, they don't often have that contact with another human being. And also during sex, it's often about having, not having, but giving back, you know. It's not just purely about receiving. Mm. So receiving a kahuna bodywork is about receiving for you only. Mm. There is nothing that needs to be given back you know there is you don't have to think of another it is very much receiving and it is um i would call it an intimate sensual touch because we you know how often do you get somebody else to touch your thighs you know or to touch your belly when was the person touching your belly a lot of people even during sex don't have their belly touched mm. you know, how people go on about it not to get into the details of that <laughs> but yeah it is we we do tend to be under touch and our bodies love being touched yeah. we're very small creatures we just look at babies we just want to touch and hold the baby but that gets yeah gets lost as we get older yeah and i guess i guess too that's you know just in a general massage of general body work that that we do um do receive and many of you probably have received um you do walk away feeling just fantastic just from having that whole body massage so Mm -hmm. kahuna sounds absolutely divine so if anyone wants to get a kahuna massage um i'll put the links in the show what's what's your website address should know uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right i'm gonna put it in the show notes i'll get it off i'll get it off you sure later <laughs> i'm pretty sure it has hard tones in it <laughs> but I will, I will get you the exact thing because <laughs> you know i i i kind of trust the process you know i yes. do have a part-time job and so if people find me they find me <laughs> Well, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to make it easy for them to find you. I will put all the um contact Ivanka's contact details in the show notes, people, so that you can hook up with her to have one of her beautiful Kahuna massages. So, anything else before we leave? That- uh, I'd say that's uh, 
plenty, Wendy. For yeah, now. I think we've talked. We've talked Kahuna. We've talked access. We've talked yes. sex. <laughs> I mean, how, how does it get any better than this, right? How does it get any better? <laughs> Thanks, Ivanka, and Thank you, see Wendy. you all. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.